are you even talking about? Welcome to our 14th episode of Apex Instant Tips, coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 EST for five minutes only. This week from the great state of Maine, my name is Hayden Stein. Hi, <laughs> Hayden, how are you? Um, it's great to be back with you. Uh, I'm sure you're enjoying Maine, and as part of uh, the In Some Cinematic Universe's low-budget offering, I see that we have not uh, outfitted you with a super high bandwidth connection. You sound just a little bit fuzzy to me. Um, well, I, I hope it doesn't become a problem. No, I think it'll be fine. Um, and I know that we worked very hard this week on our tip, and I'm looking forward. I'm sure nobody else will be able to tell that we've worked hard. No, nobody's noticed it so far, but uh, um, <laughs> what do we have this week? Well, I, I wish I could present our tip, Anton, but our corporate overlords have mandated that we give over our platform to no less than Stephen Feuerstein this week. Oh, so Stephen is joining us, and Stephen is not a guest this week in the Insum Cinematic Universe, but he's actually a member. I'm a member of the Insum Universe, and I'm really glad to be here with you guys. I'm not sure if I can come back, though, because I've got a big ego, obviously. And fitting it into your show to do a little tiny tip, it, it's hard. So I've talked to the corporate overlords at Insom, and we've decided that instead of just helping you guys, I should have my own tip show. So, <laughs> starting in March, starting March 9th, I'll be having a weekly tip series as well in, uh, to complement yours. And I'm going to focus on PL SQL, which I will also do today because I can't focus on anything else. And we're going to have so much fun. I won't be restricted to five minutes. I'll even offer a quiz and we'll have a great time, but I'm certainly happy and ready to talk about a tip here today. All right, well, we all know your actual level of ego um, and we're actually really happy to have you involved this way. Um, but as you said, and uh, as we have all seen in the past, not everybody that really knows their topic can do it in just five minutes. That is the challenge. So Stephen, uh, you have but five minutes, Hayden. I think you should kick off the timer and see where we get. Ready, get, set, go. Go. Okay. Well, my tip is actually really simple. Stop writing if statements. Start writing case statements and case expressions. Did, did that fit in five minutes? <laughs> we're we're well, good? Think, all okay. right. Let's move right on. <laughs> see you next week. No, actually, what I'd like to do now is take a look at some code to explain why I'm suggesting that you want to slough off all those if statements and shift to the modern world of case. Let's see my screen. Okay, I built an Apex app. It's pretty cool. Uh, you may be aware that I'm pretty obsessed about healing our planet and specifically removing invasives. So I go out and rescue trees. I have rescued literally hundreds, maybe thousands of trees from death by invasive vines and so forth. Very satisfying. So I decided to build an app to, uh, to start managing that. And one of the things I need to keep track of for a person who's a tree rescuer is are they herbicide certified? Can they put down herbicide? And also, are they eligible to lead a team of volunteers? And the rule for eligibility to lead a team of volunteers is you, you have to be in the system for a year. Okay, so here's my really complicated app and there's my region of information, but I've got a little process to get my rescuer information. So here's my piece of code. And we can actually probably spend a half hour just looking at this code and exploring details, but I'm gonna focus on my tip because who knows, I might have like four and a half minutes left at this point. So uh, I think you got about two minutes left. Oh, Three and a half. So much time. This is great. OK, so I'm going to get my information about my tree rescuer for whatever the current ID is, which I've hard coded to the one ID that you saw on my page. And I'm going to get the name and whether or not they're herbicide certified. And it's a yes, no column. And we've also got the start date. Sorry, I guess I should have shown you the table definition first, but two minutes and all. So I'm going to grab that information, put it into items. I'm gonna get the start date and put it into a local variable. Now here's the rule. This, if you're around for more than a year, roughly speaking, you're eligible. So if eligible is true, then I'm gonna set eligible to lead to yes, otherwise set it to no, and you see the results here. I'm eligible to lead. So, you know, nice simple code, not that it's easy enough to read. What's the problem? Well, first of all, let's not talk about the problem. Let's talk about what I think your code should look like instead. So my suggestion is that your code should look like this. No more Boolean variable. Definitely you don't say equal true. 
which is what this would be down here if I exposed it that way. Um, so now I'm simply going to assign a value to my item case. When this expression is true, then return y else n. And this, I would argue, is the way you should go when you're doing these kinds of assignments in the future. Now, I've truly Good. ended my tip. All right. So we're, have we made the five minutes? We are very so close. We have uh, two minutes to go. Two hours. So I think this may be our fastest tip ever. So, um, And we will absolutely call that a win. I have some additional questions. Um, but I'm going to hold my questions uh, and let folks know that if you really just came in for the tip, I'll let Stephen repeat his tip in the 10 seconds that it really takes to give the, the details of it. And then we'll have you do all the things that you normally do. Subscribe. Well, go ahead, Stephen. Yeah. And, and so, so the tip very simply is the next time you're writing an if statement, ask yourself, would it be better to use a case expression or a case statement instead? And the answer, I think you'll find more and more, especially after I overcome any objections raised today is yes, yes, I should probably use a case instead. Now, I know that you guys have some questions, but also let's, I'd like to hear from all of you in the audience, any suggestions you have for improving or changing any of the code you've seen? Because actually this is just the first of four iterations of this piece of code that I moved through to make Great. it better and better and better. Great, so what we'll do is anybody that came in for the five minutes, go ahead and write your Congressman, send a letter to your friends, subscribe, smash the bell, all those things. Um, if you wanna stick around, we'll do a quick wisdom of the week. We'll do a puzzler and we'll take any addition. You know what, we'll do the puzzler last. We'll do a wisdom of the week. We'll take any additional questions and then we'll do the puzzler right at the end. So definitely send those questions in. And I know I have a couple. Hayden, you're on the uh, hot seat for this week's wisdom of the week. I am. I thought I would flex my wisdom this week. So uh, if we could display the excellent. Yeah. So uh, I thought today's wisdom of the week is perhaps more of a challenge to myself and to others at your game to inject a little bit more humanity into your applications. So I think most development work is deadly serious and we neglect to inject uh, personality or humanity into our work. Uh, and so my cue for this is the now famous and old um, Google joke that is still current today. You can try it yourself. So if you Google recursion, it'll give you that little prompt. Did you mean recursion? And it's it's this little reminder that the Google team is human is composed of humans. And I, I think that wait we wait, wait you have proof that that particular joke was actually created by a human at Google and not Google <laughs> AI. <laughs> Well, I, I like to think that. And um, I would like to challenge myself to bring a little bit more personality to the table when it comes to um, uh, my development work. I've just been reviewing some of Hayden's code. And honestly, Hayden, I, more personality, really? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of personality in that code. Well, well this, may be, this may be actually a, a really, um, one of the biggest challenges we've given to folks because I, I, um, I often am, uh, ripping out uh, personality because it doesn't necessarily fit. But to, to find personality that fits well, I think is a real challenge and, and one that I'm game for. Yeah, and, and I think this show is an example of personality on display. Um, the uh, the wisdom of the week, the uh, puzzler at the end, like it's all very, it's very us. Yeah, excellent. Well, so I'm gonna move right into, I have a question. Oh. Uh, Ah, here we have a comment from Ramona. Stephen, that's to you. Maybe move that code right into, into SQL instead Let's of- in that screen again. So the suggestion is move it into SQL. And I think what Ramona was saying is this rule right here, why not move it into the SQL screen here? Let's grab this. Just to leave that orig original one in place, let's move this up here. Let's assume that we still, no, we're not displaying the start date. Okay, so let's take this out. Let's put this here. And then what we're gonna say is start date. Now, this by itself, eh, not gonna work, right? Because this is a Boolean expression, which you can't put in SQL. So what I think Ramon, well, I'm sure what Ramona actually meant is to take that whole case expression mm. and move it right inside the SQL statement. And this, by the way, not only is it a, a cool idea, and I have a little bit of pushback on it, which I'll come back to later, but not the general idea of moving logic into SQL. Um, 
But this also shows one of the really powerful benefits of a case expression over an if statement. With case, you can have a case statement, which is very similar to an if else if statement. And you can have a case expression. There's no such thing as an if expression. And because you can have a case expression, you can put it directly into SQL statements, into assignments, into other procedural um, statements. But you're right. So Ramona, great point. Move as much log logic as you can into your SQL statements. Now, the downside of this move that you suggested is something that's very subtle and can be hard to recognize. This is a business rule. And to me, the simpler the business rule, the more, the more difficult it is to recognize that it's actually a rule or a formula. And we know what happens with rules and formulas, they change, they get more complex over time. So in general, I think it's a bad idea to expose these kind of formulas and especially embed them into SQL. But instead there would be a function, and I can show you a version of a package that I built around this code. Um, there would be a function that says, Am I el is this person eligible to lead or not? And that would then be called inside the SQL statement. But then you could say, but wait a minute, that's an extra context switch. So maybe we shouldn't call it in the SQL statement. That's my answer to Ramona. <laughs> your answer is, is that you're not going to answer? Or is no, it no, you'll answer that question great, in your own tip show? What, what, what is this? It's a great general rule to follow, which is you put as much logic as you can inside a SQL statement. But there are other rules that can compete with that or conflict with that. And when you're moving a business rule or a formula into SQL, part of the challenge is you end up exposing it and thereby having to reproduce it, sometimes even in the same SQL statement. In the same SQL statement, you can even use a with function clause to hide it. But in general, my argument would be every single rule and formula you ever run into should have its own function inside either a grouped validation or rules package or most likely separated out to different packages. And then you call them as needed. And then you deal with the context switch, potential overhead of a context switch when called in SQL. And in some cases, you might even back out the encapsulation for that one context. But in general, move your formulas to functions, call the functions. And certainly if this is a, a small number of rows, it's expected to be returned. Um, in our case, it's one row that's mm -hmm. going to be expected to be returned. The, the context switch uh, is not a big issue. But if, um, if this were used in a, a report or something else like that, um, having thousands and thousands of rows uh, with that context switch uh, becomes it could issue. become an issue, right? And so I, and I, what I want to do, though, is not have everybody walking away thinking, oh, I should not call PL SQL functions inside SQL statements because of the context switch overhead. But there is overhead. And you definitely need to be really careful about where and when you call these functions. For example, if you call the function in the where clause, the chance of it being executed thousands and thousands, who knows how many times, is very high. If it's called in the select list, so it's only the number of rows being returned, then you're at less of a danger, but you're right. In a very large report, you could still hit some overhead. The point here to remember when you're ever talking about performance and optimization is it doesn't matter if it's not the fastest implementation. What matters is, is it fast enough to meet user expectations and requirements? That's all that matters in terms of performance. I think we have a rebuttal. Well, I'm not sure what the but is about. I, I agree with that. The function has the business rule in it. Uh, so Ramon, I'm just not sure what the if that was an, an objection or just an, an agreement. But I agree with that, except for the lot. So so my question is maybe more about the fundamental why of the tip. So I get that it's more concise to replace an if um, uh, if logic with a case statement. Uh, but what, what is the actual motivation here? So I'm going to pull up live SQL. Um, I should find a nice script there to share with you guys that, that does spends more time exploring the differences between these two. Let's see if that gives me anything. Yep. Explorations in case. So this is a, a script in live SQL. Hopefully you all know about live SQL. So it's Oracle database available 24 by seven. You can write SQL, write PL SQL. Mm -hmm. And there's a vast code library. I've got about 250 scripts on PL SQL here. And this just runs through the variations of Things like an if else if statement, changing it to case. And so, Stephen, our show doesn't tend to go over 15 minutes, and we're at the 14 minute mark now. So, I'm going to suggest that this is a great place for people to go and research this topic more. Um, is and I, I love the Live SQL website. I uh, visit it several times a week. 
And the bottom line is, so the bottom line quickly is that you just have tremendously more flexibility by using case instead of if. Sometimes it's cleaner to read. Sometimes you can actually avoid having lengthy multiple if-else if, if statements in a very nice compact single expression or assignment. The other thing, just to look at this very simple case, going back to the code, and then I'll, I'll stop talking, um, is that one of the really nice things about this, the code volume is not very different. This is more than readable, except for the equals true. Well, don't want that. But the difference here is that right at the beginning, I say, oh, I'm doing an assignment. Here, I have to read into the if statement to find out what I'm actually doing. It's a small thing. But, and clearly, as your, as your code gets more complex, then it's more important. In this very simple example, it's six to one half dozen of the other. But I really like how it leaves with the assignment as opposed to burying the assignment. And I'll say I'm, I'm a recent convert to a case, um, you know, uh, more and more all the time. I suppose it's been a few years since I started using case, but it's become, uh, it's, it's, the, its influence has come greater and greater into my code uh, as, as I use it more. Um, so Stephen, we want to thank you very much. We'd like you to stick around for our puzzler. Um, we tend to not give the answer. I have no doubt that you will have the answer before the puzzler is even completed. But hold off on that answer. We'll let other folks uh, have a chance to, uh, to do it. As we know, uh, this is the in some cinematic universes low budget uh, operation. We have at this point, I believe, <clears throat> completely exhausted our slide budget. So we're gonna go old school and grab a whiteboard. Here we have it. Here's our whiteboard. And Hayden and Steven as well, our tip, our puzzler this week is about connecting the dots. So if I were to ask you to connect two dots with the rules that you can only use straight line segments and those line segments must not cross, I think this would be an easy problem. Oh, yes. We we'll connect two oh, dots. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it's very tricky. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> Is that let's, the whole thing? Let's, let's make this a little harder. Um, I'm going to give you three dots, and I'm, on, I'm going to say you can arrange these three dots however you like, but same rules apply. You can only connect them with straight lines. They, those lines cannot cross, and every dot has to be connected to every other dot. So let's start by connecting. Do we have dots. to stay in, in two dimensions? Uh, we do. We have to remain in two dimensions. So we start with two dots. Hayden, any suggestions? Well, you could uh, have a an arc line between the, the first and third, but that would violate the straight line rule. That would violate the straight line rule. And you could have a, um, a crooked line, but that would also not be a straight line. Indeed. But you could do a range. I can move a dot? Yes, absolutely. So move any dot off the line and, you, and you're done. Beautiful. We'll rearrange it into- No matter how you do it. As a triangle. As as there we go. All right. And so that leads us to this week's puzzler. This week's puzzler is, can this be done with four dots? And if so, can it be done with five dots? So this week's puzzler is, can you connect all four dots, rearranging them however you like, using only straight lines, no crosses, and every dot must connect to every other dot. And, and this only is, two dimensions. And only two dimensions. And, and single universes, no parallel universe stuff either. No parallel universes, no time. Time is not a dimension. We need to liven things up here a little bit. That's right. We, we need to really <laughs> specify this. We're okay. never having you on the show again. <laughs> and of course, if you can do four dots, the question becomes, can you do five? So this week's puzzler, can we connect all four dots? No no curves, no crosses. Um, there we have in two dimensions. Time is not a dimension. There we go. <laughs> and, uh, that is a real thinker. All right. Uh, well, once again, you have wasted a perfectly good, oh my gosh, 19 minutes uh, listening to us. Um, thank you again. And don't forget to do all the things. Like, subscribe. Oh, all the things. Uh, send a letter Connect to your friends. The trees. Yes. <laughs> Rescue trees or plant one of trees. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks all. See you next Friday. Good to be here. Take care. Fun weekend. Bye -bye. Stay math.